When your AC stops working, just call the experts at KS Services Heating and Air. They're fast and affordable. Right now, purchase any Bryant Energy Efficient System and save with 0% interest for 60 months with approved credit. It comes included with a five-year labor warranty. And our fair price guarantee means that we will always give you three quotes for every situation. A good, better, and best. Call KS Services Heating and Air today. We roll on whatever it takes. This is the Weather Extreme video. It's the morning edition. This is for Labor Day, Monday, September 4th. We've got a beautiful weather day coming up today for Alabama. Some rain tomorrow night, then a refreshing air mass late this week. And Irma, a whole lot of questions about that big hurricane in the Atlantic. Many things to talk about. So let's start it with the water vapor satellite view. Heat Ridge in the west, they've been hot and dry. Troughing again over the eastern part of Canada. That'll be digging south, pushing a cold front through here early Wednesday. And boy, it feels good this morning. Look at Fort Payne, 54 Upper 50s for Coleman and Gadsden. But we warm up quickly today. The high should be in the upper 80s, which is where we should be for this time of the year. There's the watch warning map. Most of the issues are back in the uh, northwestern states with uh, wildfire dangers and uh, issues there because of the ridge. The east is quiet. Along our cold front, we have an enhanced risk of severe weather around Indianapolis today. The overall risk extending from near Springfield, Missouri, up to the far eastern Great Lakes. Of course, we're in dry air here. Tomorrow, uh, the risk is over the northeastern states with the cold front down here. We might see some thunder late tomorrow or tomorrow night. Severe weather not expected. And then day three, which is Wednesday, a marginal risk for parts of the eastern seaboard. Uh, we get into drier air, really refreshing air mass coming in here. Uh, in fact, uh, Wednesday, the high will drop into the maybe mid-70s. This is the rain for the next seven days, valid through Monday of next week. First off, you see that big swath out in the Atlantic. Uh, that could have to do with Irma. But for us, rain amounts about one-half to one inch. And again, this will be uh, late tomorrow and tomorrow night. After that, we'll be dry for a while. So, tropics. Here we go. Let's look at the big picture. We've got Irma, of course. That's going to be the talk of the town. We've got a wave trailing Irma that could be Jose at some point. And disturbance down in the Bay of Campeche. This is the five-day outlook. That uh, disturbance in the southwestern Gulf, just a low-end chance of developing. However, the system trailing Irma has a high chance of developing. And again, that most likely becomes Jose down the line. But let's uh, focus on Irma. This is the satellite view early this morning. The sun was coming up on the big hurricane. Uh, maximum sustained winds are at 115 miles per hour. And this will likely stay a major hurricane along the track for at least the next five days. Uh, we've got hurricane hunters in the area now. It's within range of the hurricane hunters. Therefore, we can get these radar images, and it looks pretty pretty good. Uh, the uh, Air Force is in there now. We'll have the NOAA G4 in there. Uh, later today. So we're going to get some good data with these uh, uh, radio sound drops, and that should help the modeling in coming days. This is the official track from the Hurricane Center. And uh, we have this thing kind of clipping the northern Leeward Islands now. And notice the Hurricane Center has been adjusting to the south, staying just north of Puerto Rico, just north of Hispaniola, and sitting on the north coast of Cuba late Friday night, early Saturday morning. So let's look at some modeling here. The, these are the tropical models, and they've clearly adjusted south. And then they show a hard right turn uh, right about the time it gets to the Florida Straits, and that doesn't bode well for places like Miami and Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. Let's look at the uh, global models. This is the GFS ensemble. And again, we caution you, this one has not performed that well. The mean, it's the black series of dots, and that's the one you want to watch. There's 21 members here, and the uh, mean brings it right up through the Florida Peninsula. And again, that certainly is uh, problematic for everybody in, uh, on the east coast of Florida. Not the west coast, but the east coast. Now, let's look at the European, which has performed better. And again, you can see that uh, most of the members show the same thing, a hard right-hand turn. 
Only one, there's one outlier that gets it in the Gulf, but almost all the members keep it either on the east coast of Florida or in the Atlantic. And you know what I'm going to say here. It's still a little too early, and we want to refer you to the official Hurricane Center products. I'm not even showing these things on social media. The only time you're going to see this stuff for me, it's on these uh, weather extreme videos here uh, because there's so much misuse of this and there's so much insane information floating around. But clearly, the screaming message, if you are in Miami or on the east coast of Florida, anywhere from Miami on up to uh, Daytona, Jacksonville, then up to the Carolinas, just have your plans ready, just in case. This is the peak of the hurricane season. You ought to have that ready anyway. And we'll get better clarity in coming days, but it's a little too early to give you a specific forecast. Let me go back to the Hurricane Center track. This is, this is good information right here. And I just want to suggest that you use this data. So, you know, you, you'll find 10,000 people posting wild model output and bogus information, but it's kind of stick with the Hurricane Center, but there's a pretty good chance this thing makes a hard right-hand turn. When does the turn occur? That's the big question, and it's just too early to answer that with any confidence. Let's look at the deterministic uh, output here. This is the GFS valid uh, today at 1 o'clock. This is the 06E run. 594 heat out in the western states and uh, troughing north of us in a beautiful day today sunny with upper 80s and we can really be baking this time of the year you know the highest temperature on record in our state came on september 5th 1925 when it hit 112 in centerville now tomorrow we will uh, have the morning dry but we'll bring in the chance of showers tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night with a cold front coming in there might be some thunder don't expect any severe weather this is tomorrow night just after midnight, the surface front uh, pushing down through the Tennessee Valley. And then Wednesday at midday, the front is on down below Montgomery. So it clearly looks like our best chance of rain with this feature will come uh, late tomorrow and tomorrow night. And then Wednesday, clearing and cooler, maybe mid-70s with the shower shifting down into South Alabama. Thursday, Thursday morning, we go down in the mid-50s. Some of the cooler pockets may be hitting upper 40s. Look at the anomalies on Thursday. Temperature anomalies, very cool for the eastern half of the country. Friday, beautiful weather here. I mean, we're going to be great after this uh, cold front comes in tomorrow night. Okay, so this is Saturday as the weekend begins. Uh, we'll focus on Irma. We're, we're in great shape. The upcoming weekend here, beautiful. Uh, Irma on the GFS is sitting on top of the island of Cuba. And the question is, will there be any in interaction with land? that might weaken it some. Sunday, the northward turn begins, and this is Monday, and the circulation down here is dominated by Irma. Down below that, uh, the GFS has this thing somewhere over southern Florida, uh, maybe just north of Lake Okeechobee, and approaching uh, Daytona Beach in Melbourne. And this is not a forecast. This is model output, but all models show a hard turn to the right somewhere over the northern coast of Cuba. We'll keep going. This is Tuesday of next week. This is September 12th. The GFS has this thing coming through Georgia. Now, we're going to be on the dry side, but if this happens to be correct, and I don't think it is, we would see some rain from this. And then on uh, Wednesday the 13th, the remnant circulation is near Paducah, Kentucky. I don't think that's the right solution. Let's go to the European, which is uh, performing much better, obviously, in the medium range. This is Sunday, this coming Sunday, September 18th. Or I'm sorry, September 10th. Irma, a very dangerous hurricane that's uh, just southeast of uh, Miami and east of Key West. We'll go to Monday. This is Monday, September 11th. It's offshore. Um, and that would keep the Florida East Coast on the good side, if you will. It'll still be obviously windy and, and rough. But the big issues are going to be along into the right of the circulation centers. So the European on this run has it that the center is staying offshore. And then Tuesday morning of next week, it brings it in up on the coast of North Carolina, up above uh, Myrtle Beach. And again, this is no forecast. This is model output, but I do think the idea is certainly plausible. So and again, like we've talked about, everybody from Key West and Miami on up to the Outer Banks, you just need to have your plan in place. And the effects of this thing, it's still... You know, seven, eight, nine days away. You got plenty of time. Time is on your side. No need to panic. This, this, there's not 
it's too early for a specific forecast. And then this is uh, Wednesday of next week, and the remnant circulation is up over either Ohio or Pennsylvania. All right, uh, numbers off the European. Look at the nice cool down later this week. And then we're seeing some upper 80s toward mid-month. Remember, it can be pretty warm, if not hot, in September. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes in the blog. The next video here by 4 o'clock today. If you can't catch us this evening on ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. AC broken? Just call KS Services Heating and Air. All Bryant Energy Efficient Systems come with a five-year labor warranty, and our fair price guarantee means that we'll always give you three quotes for every situation. Just call KS Services Heating and Air today.